talked a little bit. There's a good look at the freshman sensation. Well, I say sensation. She played one game. <laughs> I'm putting, we're putting the pressure on you, Gabby Garcia. And how about that? Five of your first six hitters and five of your seven lefties, Mindy. I, whenever OU has a lot of lefties, they just do well. They love lefties. <laughs> so... I'm totally not biased because I was left-handed at, at all. all. They're not just all. great. I don't no other way to put it, Chris. First pitch headed home, and it's a little <laughs> bit low from Sam Landry, the Louisiana transfer. Got a good look at her last week, and the numbers were pretty impressive from Sam Landry. Three and a third, seven hits, two earned runs, walked one, struck out four. As Garcia takes it a little bit up high. 70.6% first pitch strikes. 11 whiffs on 66 pitches. Mount Bellevue, Texas. Changes speeds, moves different planes. Well, speaking of changing <laughs> speeds, that's a 2-0 off speed. You Come cued on. her. You cued her up right there. And to be able to throw a change with a 2-0 count on the inside half, nonetheless, that is confidence in that pitch. That's confidence in your command. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Oh, no. Nope. Sam needs a little bit of time. And how fun is it to see all these new players here? They're just, <laughs> it's, it's new energy, it's fresh energy. Another off speed. This misses up. Three balls and a strike. Ella Parker and Nelly McEnroe Marinas manning the corners for Team Sooner. Over at second base. Zagbayani, that's ripped foul. Coach Castle with kind of the matrix lean. <laughs> Sydney Barker is the shortstop. There's a good look at Coach Castle. Making sure that Garrett's taking care of business over there in the Sooner dugout. Keep G in line, Coach. <laughs> Here's the 3-2 pitch, full count. Nice play by Agbayani, one away. Smooth. Speaking of, of smooth, we talked a little bit to Coach before first pitch, and she gave us six or seven things that she's going to be keeping an eye on tonight. She was generous with the six or seven. I, was, I didn't want to get off the phone, I'm not going to lie. But one that the GOAT said was she wants people when they watch this second battle series game to say oh my gosh look how much better they are in one week it's the first pitch to Abigail Dayton finds that outer edge for strike one there's a first pitch strike and in that there's a lot of different branches and as the kids would say levels to it Jerry <laughs> so we'll we'll monitor a bunch of different angles on this but just overall improvement is that one's hit back to Agbayani two away Hot spot over there. <laughs> Look how much better they are, and that could be a little bit of everything in the, in the hop and the zest and the energy and in the overall execution, too, right? Absolutely. And you think, okay, there are so many newcomers, so many, and I think there needs to be emphasis on this just because of this is a lot of firsts for a lot of these players. So last week, that was the first time that they were on this field that they were on this team, that they were with this program, that they were playing a scrimmage. Yep. So being able to get that out of the way, find that, I think automatically you're going to see some sort of elevation for both teams. That drops in for strike one. Didn't do a good job of giving you the entire defense for team sooner. Cheney Helton is out and right. Hannah Kaur is in center, though. She is wearing the crimson shirt as it's going to be an Agbayani kind of a half inning. And out in love was Tia Malloy, and you'll get to see, see Tia Malloy when we come back because she'll be leading off for a team sooner. Good start. As we head to the bottom of the first inning, we are scoreless in the battle series. Cash in. Solid top half of the first from Sam Landry. So we get our first look at Team Sooner. There is Tia Malloy last week out in right field. Threw a runner out at home. Impressive bloodline DNA and an impressive start for Tia. Look at that. Lefty, lefty, lefty. One, two, three. Nellie McEnroe Marinas who hit one out of here last Wednesday night. 
Looks very smooth over at third. We'll back cleanup. And Peyton Monticelli will get the call to start the game for the Sooners. Last year saw limited action. The Wisconsin transfer, but I, I make this point every single time we get a chance to see Peyton Monticelli pitch. 1.09 ERA, only 19 and a third total innings last year. But when you hear anyone talk about her first pitch, Tia, opposite direction. <laughs> Patty Gasso clapped as she saw that <laughs> as Malloy just went down and drove it into left field for the first hit of the game. Tia Malloy was interrupting me, bragging about Peyton Monticelli by driving a pitch low and away the other way. But Peyton's got dirty stuff. I mean, they, as far as just pure movement, velocity, she's got a chance to be really special. And I, I think that comes with innings, and she's going to get a lot of those this year. The confidence of trusting her spin, mm -hmm. trusting even that pitch for a first pitch. Yes, it was a ball. It was an up and in. But you saw the way that ball moved through the zone. It was tight in on the hands. It makes a hitter feel that speed. There's so many options that you can go from there. Ana Agbayani, runner goes, hit and run, grounded foul. Foul balls are brought to you by one this is interesting because I don't know if many fans are the same way as I am, but even in the middle of the battle series, I started thinking, oh, okay, maybe Tia Malloy there in that leadoff spot, a little pop, a little power, a lot of speed. But then you think about Agbayani, and look what she can do. Lays down the bunch. She's going to beat it out. First and second. Back to the back. Malloy. Oh, Monticelli threw it away. Get aggressive, Tia Malloy. It's going to be close at third. No, it won't. Creating chaos on the base paths. A uh, Patty Gassel, Patty Gasso staple. Second and third, nobody out. I, I love that placement. Making Peyton Monticelli have to come out of the pitcher's mound and create that panic of, okay, I, I have to look around. Now, I didn't think her throw was necessarily the worst throw. Was it a little? Uh, excuse me, Gabby Garcia just set up on the other side of the plate. I think I would have loved to see her a little bit because that runner, she rounded pretty far. Yeah. I think I would have loved to see her on that left field side of the second base. But they're new. It's it's learning each other. It's learning your pitcher. It's learning your defense. No balls and a strike. Ella Parker. Job on the pitch that was a little bit outside. Two different catchers that you see. That's Zach Kay behind, Zach Kay, excuse me, behind the home plate. And the dish for Team Boomer. Set their defense after this 1 1 pitch. Check swing. And say she didn't go. It's a good nope. bait pitch there by Monticelli. Talked again about her using her movement whenever she ran into trouble. It was whenever she wasn't trusting that movement. Mm -hmm. and those balls would stay fast. Whenever she trusted that move. That ball okay. moves. Two and one. Sid Sanders is over at first, and Zach Kay is going to go out and have a quick word with Monticelli. We'll have a few players that will bounce between each team. In this instance, it's Sidney Barker, who's out there at second base right now. Abigail Dayton is in center field. Cassidy Pickering in left. That's Maya Bland in right. Really have been impressed with the freshman Katie Lee McKay. She's over at third with Gabby Garcia at short. That's him. I mean, absolutely blasted out of here. Ella Parker, no doubt, in the center field. Wow. Three, zip, team, sooner. The definition, Nicole Mendez, of a blast. That was it. A nuke, a bomb, destroyed. Whatever adjective you want to use, it fits with that. This pitch left middle, middle, and you cannot do that against Ella Parker. She showed that last year, and she's picking up right where she left off. I mean, she got all of that. Run I've seen to center field here. Good comeback by Monticelli to get the swing and a miss for strike one. Some bold words there, Chris. Well, Blink. 
I've there's seen, been a lot of home runs. I think that's a big compliment. I don't think as McEnroe Marinas fouls, fouls that one back, we're going to see a shift here at second base. You'll see this a lot just to make sure that nobody misses an at bat. Agbayani's going to go out and play second. I haven't seen a home run yet reach the club level seats in center field. Now, there's been some to left center and right center that maybe hit up the second stair. Casey, our st stairwell. St what's a staircase? <laughs> I got caught between staircase and I was going to let it out. slide. I, yeah. I really was going to let we that slide. We might have come up with something new tonight. <laughs> but I, I, I still don't know what we came up with, though. I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen one quite that deep. There's a line shot towards the gap. Turn it on, Nelly. She's going to go for two. The throw is not in time. And I'll tell you what, Team Sooner has come out on absolute fire with four hits in their first four batters, two of them extra bases, and they're up three zip. I think, again, going back to this point, that's not a bad pitch for Monticelli, but whenever you're that far ahead, you don't need to be giving these hitters anything over the plate that they can touch. Impression all around from her pitchers, from the catchers, the defense, but also from base running. And that right there, I, I love that by Nelly, being able to go out and say, all right, I'm, I'm pushing for two. If the throw's on point, I'm out. But if it's not perfect, I'm there. Isabella Emerling, Redshirt Jr. Two big swings on two big pitches from the North Carolina transfer. She is an impressive physical presence for the Sooners. She's been really solid. She takes this one a little bit low. Well, we had one other arm to the idea of look how much better we are. Situational at bats, no empty at bats. Here's a good opportunity for Emerling and this one two pitch. Ooh. That's a tip of the cap to Peyton Monticelli, who worked her way back with a big strikeout, which then, the great thing about an inner squad scrimmage is you can't get too mad because you needed to see that from Monticelli. And when Coach talked about the plan her and Coach Rocha had for the pitcher's attack locations, and that's exactly what Monticelli did there as she works it in on the fists to Sydney Barker for strike one. Good to see that bounce back after four tough at bats to start the game for Monticelli. And you're also starting to see a lot more off speed from Monticelli to offset that hard pitch that she has. It's a lot easier as a hitter to sit one speed, but whenever you have to worry about two speeds, especially with somebody who throws in the upper 60s, that makes it a lot more difficult. Ball and a strike, one out, three zip team sooner. Nelly's at second. Another one in on the fist. And Monticelli has jumped ahead of ball in two strikes. Cindy Barker out of Rockland High School in Rockland, California. Two-time Sierra Foothills League Player of the Year. Four-time first team honoree. 400 batting average during her senior year. And of course, where you make your impact a lot of time is in travel ball. Wow. That's hit hard. And deep to right field. Oh, what a play! Right up against the white on the top of the wall, and there's that smile. Two away. Smart base running at second by McEnroe Morenas to get the extra bag. And there's two away. That was a big time defensive play. Oh my gosh, the way this outfielder covered the ground. Maya Bland. Look at that. She knows the fence is coming. You could see her reach her hand out looking for it. But she was committed to catching that ball no matter where it was. Ace running, being able to be heads up, knowing that she has a beat on that ball. It looks like she was tracking it all the way. A couple steps off the bag, just enough to get on time, touch, and advance. Cheney held pride to Kawita. One pitch. Ooh, that was dirty. Missed inside, though. Kawita, home of the... Legendary, great Ricky Bryan, one of the all-time great Sooner football players. 
We worked a football reference in. I know you Texas week. <laughs> you have to. That's right. Two balls and a strike. Scrimmage and the triathlon all in one week. Oh my gosh, that's right. The triathlon is this week. It's this Friday. Saturday. Is it Friday? Okay. Are you in Are you going to be there? <laughs> No. <laughs> Cuts her back up the middle. There's the smooth play of Garcia. Oh, wide of the bag. The run will score. Aggressively, Helton takes second. We'll double check the ruling on that. But it's been a great start for a team sooner who is now up for nothing. Wow. Trying to do too much here, Mindy? Just a little bit. I mean, that ball definitely led her up the middle. But instead of the full body turn, can you take an extra shuffle a little bit faster than a full body turn? A little bit sharper. Those are things that you learn. That's why these games in the fall are so important. Because you're playing against high quality caliber players, you have to be at your best. And this teaches you how to be at your best. They mean it literally, Oklahoma does, when they say iron sharpens iron. Tia Malloy singled on the first pitch she saw earlier this half inning. She takes the first pitch here for ball one. As of now, it's a hit for Cheney Helton. That's a first in the battle series. There you go. And she is <laughs> she is taking a lead at second base. Cindy Barker is checked back in out at second as Agbayani waits on deck. One ball, one strike. Four nothing team sooner oh this is trouble get out there Barker just off her glove perfectly placed it's a two hit inning for Tia Malloy and it's five nothing team sooner a little blue a little Tex leaguer and just out of the reach of Sydney Barker that's a oh. great pitch by Peyton Monticelli and you could just see Barker she was maybe a step or two in front of the baseline with a hitter like Malloy, you're probably gonna wanna be a step or two behind. So I think if she's set up in the right position, she catches that all day long. And that, mm -hmm. that is, again, just the inexperience of who you're playing. You, right. you don't know them. You don't know how to set up. You, you don't know that quite yet. And so it's just learning that, learning what's going on, especially with two outs. You wanna give yourself the room to not have the flares drop behind you. And I think you can see Jen Rocha, she's out there talking with Monticelli. Coach Gasso behind talking to her infield. She's probably discussing that. This is a great teaching moment. And that was a great pitch by Monticelli. I love that delivery. I love she beat Malloy on that pitch. She got her fisted. That was a flare that should have been caught. That was a good pitch by Monticelli. And in general, this is a big six run bottom of the first inning for Team Sooner. But you don't want Monticelli to get two down. This is going to be one of the best offenses that she'll face, and they see her a lot in practice, so got to continue to grind away. That, and I think that they want to see her get at least three innings here tonight. As Agbayani shows bunt, the runner goes, the throw, out of time. Okay. We've seen the. Now Malloy's just showing off. And I love <laughs> I was it. Just I love say, it. <laughs> we've seen the situational hitting. We've seen uh, Malloy go down and drive one last week. We saw her throw a runner out from right field. Now she steals her first back. Time is called. Coach Rocha had jumped out of the dugout and then quickly went back in. <laughs> Quickly is the key word. She ran back in. She she got to about the brown and the astroturf out in front of the Sooner dugout and thought, oh, I better get back in. There's her taking off. Pretty good throw and just. On that too, Monticelli, again, because you have a separate team inside the dugout, they're not going to be yelling runner. Mm -hmm, right. Just a little bit of confusion there. You didn't see her duck. Wires out. Line shot into the gap. Malloy will score easily. Off to second goes Agbayani. What a start here in the bottom of the first inning for Team Sooner. It's now 6 0. And Elana Agbayani has two first inning hits. What a start. Aggressive at the plate. And Team Sooner is cooking. Mm, that's just left a little bit over the plate. Over the 
played and elevated, and especially with the lefty, it's whenever you're rotating and you're a little early, the pitches that are elevated, they're easier to pull with you and get into that gap. I think if that one was placed slower, you might have seen something on the ground that defense could have touched. But that was a good changeup just in, wasn't called for a strike, but that was a good changeup against Parker, first pitch. Seventh hit of the inning for Team Boom, or T Team Sooner, excuse me. And the location of that strike that Monticelli just threw, that was right at the knees, perfectly on the corner. I, even if she lives in that height, I think she's going to see a lot more success than those elevated pitches at the belt line. 1-1 one, one is in for a strike. Parker shakes her head a little bit. One ball and two strikes. What more can be said about Ella Parker and the season she had in 2024? Top three finalists for freshman of the year. One ball, two strikes. Long wait from Monticelli. She's ready. This is out. It's kind of crazy. Yes, she is fantastic. Top mm -hmm. three finalists for freshman of the year, but it's kind of crazy when some of your freshmen are your veterans, yeah. sophomores now, but <laughs> they, they are your vets on this really young team as far as experience. Ooh, ooh. It's going to leave a mark when it comes from Monticelli. Let's make sure there is a smile on the face of Ella Parker after that. Knowing Ella Parker, though, I think she would be smiling even if it did. That's true. <laughs> Seriously hurt her. This one, Monticelli trying to Ooh, go up and gosh. in, but that one just grabs her right on the side. There is, it, ooh, there is no protection there. Yeah. She's, uh, <laughs> trying to she's run. wearing it a little bit. Folly view was, uh, Folly steal now. Folly play with steal over the first base coach as Nellie McEnroe Moranis takes the first pitch up and away. Nellie doubled her last time up, scored a run. Folly would take some hit by pitches. There were some, <laughs> there were some bruises from Folly back in the day. So oh, she, there was. She will uh, be a sympathetic ear for Ella Parker over there. She was going to get the first one way or another. <laughs> Tough spot here for Monticelli now. Down two balls and no strikes to Nelly. This is the 10th, 11th hitter of the inning. This is the biggest inning of the battle series that we've had offensively for either squad. Oh, wow. <laughs> two balls and a strike. They didn't sell the outfield seating, but... This is an incredible crowd for a fall ball game. Just awesome to see. Now the third baseline packed. Sooners will travel to take on Texas A&M Commerce next to me. Well, that was pretty dirty. Couldn't stop her swing. Two -two. Was. And again, that height level of that pitch. I think if Monticelli can really master that height that's right at the knees, every time she's placed that pitch, it's either been a take a swing and miss, or a really just off Ooh, ground look ball. Coach. Look at her. She. This is like her third time doing the matrix move. She. She she's has smooth, just gotten man. better with age. She is smooth. <laughs> she knows she's smooth too. Look at her face. <laughs> is she not wearing the wrist brace tonight? She is. She oh, is. okay, okay. She's got to get. She's subtle back with from uh, wrist surgery, showing no ill effects. She was waving people home like crazy. <laughs> two two pitch. A little bit up. Full count. The full 2025 softball schedule has not yet been released. Coach did tease that there is a chance we're going to see a few more home tournaments this year. Full count, foul back. We saw the SEC schedule, and oof, it is challenging. Sooners, it is a gauntlet. Sooners will open up against a new look South Carolina Gamecock team on March 7th. Take road trips to Fayetteville and Columbia. Places that hosted regionals this last year. Full count pitch. That's hit pretty well to center field. Dayton and Bland give chase. Dayton falls off. Bland makes the catch and that'll do it.
What a half inning for a team sooner. They sent 11 batters to the plate. They pound out seven hits, six runs, including the three-run home run from who else? Vanilla Parker. Team Boomer's got some work to do. They're down six zip in the battle series on the SEC Network. The crowd was engaged in the mid-inning question. They did a family feud survey. Top four things you're most likely to leave home without. <laughs> and uh, Keys was up there very high, which made an old soul like myself pretty happy. A little disappointed, <laughs> like water bottle. Everyone's got their own water bottle now. If it's, uh, I don't know, whatever you use. Surprise, that wasn't on the list. Keys, sunglasses, what am I leaving out? That was awesome. Wallet, Wallet yeah. I was yelling wallet. The crowd was in. Our guy got all four of them, and we might be in for some more fireworks. Team Sooner is up six zip on Team Booner, uh, Boomer with Nicole Mendez. I'm Chris Plank, and Sid Sanders will lead things off. Last week in the bottom of the seventh inning in the game, the first game of the battle series, Sanders did this down by three, tied it. I thought Pickering might have had a chance to steal it. Ended the game in a tie, which only makes sense. Now, Sid Sanders' team had fallen behind on Wednesday. Now they've fallen behind here in a much deeper hole. Sid and Sam Landry square off. Oh, one a little bit out. Sid Sanders has, I don't think she would be mad at making this point. She's had some regular season struggles the last few years for the Sooners. As the one one pitch misses side two and one. Maybe one of the hottest stretches we've ever seen from an Oklahoma Sooner player whenever <laughs> Love's Field first opened up. <laughs> had like eight home runs in six games, finished with 15 on the season. But man, when it comes to crunch time in the play and the postseason, she has been something else in a Sooner uniform. I'd like to see her put it together for an entire season. Yeah, and she had a phenomenal freshman year at Arizona State, transferred. I think it was just a little bit of a struggle adjusting, transferring, but it, it really is a mindset. Mm -hmm. And obviously the physical is there. It's just the mental side that if Sid is going to have a full season mm. and really miss. show who she is, it's going to be on the mindset side that you're going to see the most improvement. I'll say this, and I think you'll hear me say this about just about every single Sooner that's ever worn the uniform. She is an awesome kid, easy to root for. But a good job there by Sam Landry to retire. And that pitch low in the zone, and I really do think that's the biggest difference right now between these two innings and the results that we're seeing on the scoreboard is the pitchers, the throws that they have been delivering to the plate. Yes, they're both attacking, but one pitcher, Landry, she's just been attacking lower in the zone. Monticelli, she's been leaving the pitches higher. Sid will move over and play first base now. Yeah, it's something worth keeping an eye on, and it goes back to one of the keys that Coach Gasso told us about is Maya Bland rips one into right field. One out single for Bland. <laughs> Gets a little love from her quote unquote teammate here tonight in <laughs> Sid Sanders. That's the first hit for Team Boomer. I got one that right along what you were saying. Missed a little bit of a spot to Landry and Bland made her pay. It was Katie Lee McKay. First pitch. A little bit low, and in this McKay kid, as our buddy Teddy Lehman would like to say, really impressed me here last week. Battling it. Third base. Takes the 1 0 low. I think the best way to go in whenever you're young is. Well, one, you don't have a ton of competition because there's so many spots open. 
you're not trying I didn't I didn't phrase that right it's not that you don't have a lot of competition you right. do have a lot of competition but you're not competing against a set spot which is always a little bit harder to steal from not that it's impossible but it's harder to steal a spot that's already been taken and whenever you see that as a freshman as a newcomer you're going in going <laughs> I love it. This is my chance. I, I have to show you what I have now. Yeah. Why not? I have nothing to lose. Caddo, Oklahoma, which, as I've come to learn, is where Ashley Barrett Wigington's husband is that football coach. So there's all kind of Sooner ties around here. Crazy Sooner ties. I learned a lot about Caddo <laughs> last week. 2-1, a little bit, ooh, caught the bottom edge of the zone, 2-2. Two two. two balls and two strikes. Landry. Ooh, another off-speed. Emerling from her knees, got her! Oh, what a throw by Isabella Emerling to catch the speedy Maya Bland. We'll have to watch the replay to see about the jump. And it's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. What a way to end the top half of the second inning for Team Boomer. Oh, it looked like they might get a little momentum and the old strike him out, throw him out is the top of the second. And it's all Team Sooner here in the Battle Series. gorgeous Oklahoma sky tonight as we play on in game two of the battle series with Nicole Mendez I'm Chris Plank appreciate you spending your Wednesday night with us Sooners. look at that sky oh a little pink sky that the, they tell us about in all the famous country songs glorious week here it's OU Texas week so a lot of the Sooner Nation makes their way down I-35, crosses the Red River, and paints half of the Cotton Bowl crimson, and the other half, burnt orange. Ella Parker in the circle. How about this? First pitch from Parker is low and away for ball one. And isn't that the rule? Whenever you make a big play to end a half inning, you lead off, and Isabella <laughs> Emerling will lead off. Do not be thrown off by this. Ella Parker has the chance to be an impact in the circle, make an impact for the, in the circle for the Sooners in 2025. She was a top flight recruit as a pitcher. And this is an opportunity to show what she can do, to be honest with you here in the battle series. She's falling behind 2-0 here. Wow. That was a little dirty from her. Missed low. The fact that she's out here and she's throwing after not for an entire year mm -hmm. that speaks to itself is huge that is saying okay this staff is they're looking for something to offset what they already have and what they have is great but I don't think they have that pitcher that's going to have more of the spin style than the overwhelming speed and that's what you're going to get with Ella Parker right now all the numbers that you typically find on her magnify her incredible prowess at the plate. But she was really good in the circle. Walks the leadoff hitter here, Emerling. 2.04 ERA during her senior season. 34 and a third innings pitched. And last season, she threw a couple bullpen sessions. And as you mentioned, Sooners never have enough arms, especially a lefty. And there's a double play ball. Oh, so smooth from Garcia. Look at that. Wow. Get used to that double play combination. And Garcia to Agbayani to Sanders, two away. That a kid, Ella Parker. What better way to give you a little bit of confidence boost and your middle's working for you right there. Sid Sanders, she was she was grinning pretty hard. This one, a ball low and away. It was handmade for a double play right there. And that defense, just being able to set that up, Ooh. that's cute. Jenny Helton will hit here with two outs. And Ella Parker is keeping Riley Zakay busy. 
behind home play. Okay, so you did this. This is something you pitched as in addition to playing the field. Pitched in some big moments, too, for the Sooners. What's the adjustment like? Well, mindset-wise, as that drops in outside, what's the shift like? It's big because there's an adrenaline rush that you get whenever you don't have the ball day in and day out in the circle. And so being able to separate that from everything else, that's going to be key for Ella Parker. And then two, she knows she hasn't thrown as much. So not trying to force too much right now and just going, all right, I, I know I'm not where I typically want to be or whenever I was throwing, this is where I am. But whenever I'm going into the circle, it's whatever I got today, that's what I got to work with. And being able to compete in that way and knowing what your strengths are. As a pitcher, it, it doesn't have to look all the same. Little Ebby Calvin Nuke Lelouch there is <laughs> Parker found the backstop on three of the four pitches. So Riley Zakay is going to go out and chat with her. Along with Nicole Mendez, I'm Chris Plank. It's game two of the battle series. A little different fall ball schedule for the Sooners. They're going to hit the road here next week to take on Texas A&M Commerce. That'll be next Wednesday night now to Commerce, Texas. Six o'clock. Then OU will return home on October 23rd to play Seminole State. That'll be a Wednesday. So the next two Wednesdays are actual opponents and not an inner squad scrimmage. The welcome in Leah Wodak and Louisiana Monroe on October 26th before the Gasso v. Gasso matchup on November 1st against Mac U. There's a ground ball base in in the right field. Tia Malloy has hit two of three pitches. Up running, up gunning, and they got her. Maya playing from right field, throws a strike, and they cut down Helton at third. Malloy gets the hit. Helton tagged out on another big time play by Maya Bland. What a night Maya Bland is having. We head to the third. It's been all team sooner though. They lead Team Boomer 6-0 in the battle series on the SEC Network. So fall ball is really about coaching moments. Coach Gasso talked about wanting to see this team have better situational at bats. I think we've seen that so far. Better jumps in. Here is a great coaching moment at Coleman. Just take us through this in the conversation with Cheney Helton, despite the fact that she got thrown out in that end. Whenever you think of Oklahoma, you think of several things, but one of them that pops up is the idea that their runners are aggressive. They're smart, but they are aggressive. So even though she got thrown out at third, as soon as she popped up, you saw Coach Gasso saying, yes, yes, I want that. There was a slight hesitation whenever she was about to round second, almost as if, do I go, do I not? Without that hesitation, she's safe at third, but the fact that she went means she's thinking about it. She's starting to go, okay, I want to push the limit. It's a ground ball, slow to get to the right fielder. I have the time and I have the speed to be able to be on third. Strike two quickly ahead of the count is Sam Landry. Balls and two strikes to Riley Zakay making her first plate appearance of the night. There's a looper in the right field. Oh my goodness. What a play in right field by the freshman Helton. She got thrown out at third in the inning. Says, let's go make a play. Shows off a smooth jump shot stroke there. Well done. Nothing like a little revenge catch out there in right field. And I loved her approach to diving. She knew that if she went straight on, that would be a really hard position for her glove to make that catch. So by diving diagonal, she was able to give herself a little bit more natural hand position and not cause the ball to fall out whenever she's, you know, rolling over and diving on the ground. <laughs> smooth, smooth. But shown, it's a beauty. Emerly, no chance. Gabby Garcia is making an impact here in the battle series. The big time night last Wednesday with four hits. Her fifth hit is her first on the night. I think that makes sense. Second base run. That 
placement right there is incredible. Watch how she deadens it, and as soon as she sees that ball is down, she's gone. No second glance, no nothing. And it's just far enough to her body around that and position herself to throw to first. All right, what do you think the conversation here is? Jen Rocha popped out, had a, brought everyone together. I think she's just talking a little bit of, okay, defensively, what's the communication on that? And then I think she's just also saying, as far as, right, whenever these batters get into a rhythm and they get the momentum, it's really hard to stop them. So whenever we get the chance to get a double play, to make these plays, we want to take full advantage. So let's reset, let's calm down, let's get after it, make plays for your pitcher. That was something that we saw in that first, bottom of the first inning, where there was a lot of, I don't want to say errors, but there were things where the defense was half a step behind. They were one glove length away, and if they had been on time, those would have been outs. And not that they were errors, but it's just anticipating your teammates and the moves that they're going to make. Down 6 zip, Team Boomer needs some positive vibes here. First pitch to Abigail Dayton is a little bit, ooh, called strike. That might have been a little low. I will stop trying to predict the strike zone. No balls and a strike. Chris, I stopped trying to predict the strike zone a long time ago. Yeah, you think <laughs> I'd learned my lesson by now. Every year, I would say to myself, it's different, it's different this year. Uh, I, that's one area where <laughs> I've really tried to educate myself a lot. I'm not not even trying to be a smart aleck because the 0-2 pitch from <laughs> Landry staying alive is Dayton. Right, right, right. Of course, Chris. Mike. No, I, I mean, I, I'm just saying I have a lot of respect for the, the men and women in blue. Oh. Um, and, you know, I'll I'll ask why this? What, what do I need to know? Because I just don't want to go blindly into it, blame the umpires for everything. But sometimes... You just watch it, you wonder if we're watching the same game. Here's the 0-2. Chance for a play by Malloy. No. And that's really more strike zone related. Than Long else. since wanting to go undercover. I say undercover as I'm saying this out loud on a broadcast. <laughs> Long since wanted to go undercover to umpire school to really understand because the perspective is different, just like a player versus a coach versus a fan. It's uh, different. Uh, Lloyd got a good break, two away. That was, you know, I, watching these young outfielders make play, Maya make plays. Maya Bland a couple in right field. Tim Lloyd there had the diving catch to start this half inning by helping out right. The familiarity of being in here more and practicing in Love's Field more. It was a process last year for Jada and Riley to learn the bounces and even for TRA and the infielders because it was all new. This is a group that's had, for the most part, time to practice in it and make some plays. And I think you're seeing a little more comfort with Love's Field and the unique angles in the outfield and the way the ball flies. Yeah, and, and that is big. You, you talk about that. Same, last time Sam Landry was here, she wasn't on the Oklahoma Shooters. She was on the wrong team. <laughs> she was on the other team. And that was the first time they had ever been on that field. Well, that was a hard hit ball into left field by Cassidy Pickering. It's the third hit of the night for Team Boomer, and they've got something cooking, though, with two outs for Sid Sanders. Sanders is 0 for 1 with a strikeout to lead off the second inning. Boy, we have seen this left-handed lineup just go down and get some balls, Nicole, and drive them into left field here tonight. I mean, that, she wasn't, that pitch was tight on the lower inside half of that plate. Pickering didn't have time to finish her hits, but the extension on her hands enabled that ball to get not just out to left field, but in a hurry. That almost bounced past Malloy. Strike one to Sanders. It was eight home runs in eight games, the stretch that she went through last year. As that pitch misses high. And that run started 
on March 2nd in the first home series against Liberty. Homer against Liberty and in the loss against Louisiana. And one for two with a run scored in an RBI against Texas A&M Commerce in the midweek as she takes strike two. And then homered in a, uh, against Iowa State in game one of the series here. Homered twice in game two. Homered in the Sunday finale, then homered against a Tarleton State in each game of a midweek doubleheader. Eight home runs in eight straight games, essentially. Here's the one two. That ball's hit hard down the right field line. It's got a chance, but it's foul. Good hustle down the line by Cheney Helton. Good job by Sanders going and getting that low pitch. That is where we have seen Landry live really is mid shins consistently and if you want to get a good hit those hitters have gone after those pitches every once in a while she'll make a mistake and leave one up but she's been really consistent so with Sanders with two strikes she's protecting here Parker's in it short Agbayani in second Parker at first over at third is Nelly Moy in left, Core in center, Helton in right. Battery of Emory and Land Emerling and Landry, all two. I will say I have dug the wardrobe shift in center field by Hannah Core. Because she's ended up playing center field most of the time for Team Sooner. So she's gone with the white shirt and the anthracite pants. What a pitch by Sam Landry. Team Boomer's best scoring opportunity goes by the waist side on a filthy off speed from the Louisiana transfer. How about that spot, Nicole? I mean, this one is just incredible. That Ooh. spin rate, it's deceptive. It looks like it's coming in harder than it is. And that's what you want to see from Sam Landry. <clears throat> now they're doing the chicken dance on a gorgeous night. Look at that sky. Loves feel. Great work by our camera crew here on a Wednesday midweek battle series. Game two of the fall schedule for the Sooners. They'll hit the road next week in Commerce, Texas. And we've seen Jean Roach get in her bag a little bit tonight with the pitching staff. And most impressive so far through three is Sam Landry. And overall as a staff, we'll see Isabella Smith, the Campbell transfer when we get to the season. But... I mean, this is all new. Kirsten Deal, really the only returning pitcher that saw more than 30 innings last year. She has the responsibility not only to lead this staff, but to teach them what does a championship mindset look like. She has been there the last two years, and it's going to be fun to see how this staff shakes out. We've already seen... Ella Parker throw, who's not listed on the staff. And now we have a Bayani, who also is not listed on yeah. the staff. So really, you're seeing a lot of fluidity happen right now. And I love to see it because this is going to be a team that's going to go out and compete. That's that's what I see because Coach Gasso knows how to make those teams. You're going to see that from this team. So this is the spot in the lineup where Agbayani was supposed to hit. <laughs> and so Ella Parker will lead things off. Alana Agbayani, during her two years at BYU, went 10 and 5 with a 3.84 ERA. 17 appearances her freshman season, 15 her sophomore. Started two games last year. She walks Parker on four pitches. So Ella will head down to first base after getting hit by a pitcher last time up. A little bit better for her walking down <laughs> as Nellie McEnroe Marinas makes her way to the plate. If you can not get a ball hey, to we'll your side, it. I will take that. No issues. 54 and two-third innings during her career at BYU. 32 runs. Only 30 of those were earned. Did walk 23 batters, but struck out 43. And uh, She's battling for one of the middle infield jobs. There's that misses low. The presumption after watching now a game and a couple of innings is that I 
think a Garcia Bayani double play combination might be pretty nice. <laughs> but as you mentioned, a lot of options in the circle. If her and Ella Parker can find the zone, that was unfair. She had a piece of it. Yeah, fouled off. So I think they're going to send Parker back to first base. Sad Ella. <laughs> All that work. She thought she had the bag stolen and she's got to go back to first. It's always a sad day whenever you waste a steal. That's a lot of energy for us softball players. She thought she had it. I thought she had it. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. But the point is with Agbayani, another one of those arms that they can trust. There's trouble. Into the right center field gap. Get on your horse, Nelly. Rounding third. Oh, Patty Gass was going to send Ella Parker. The throw is on time, but safe. A little bit in front of the plate, and Ella Parker shows off those wheels. It's an RBI double for Nellie McEnroe Marina. She is two for three on the night with an RBI and a run scored. In the way that that was an off speed pitch to Nellie, and the way that she was able to get her foot down and regather, reset, and drive that opposite field, not trying to do too much and accidentally pop it up, that was great. And we talked about this offense and we talked about this base running and how they want to be aggressive and push the limits. We know Ella Parker, she had the most steals on this team. So outfielder telling yourself, okay, she's gonna push the limits. This is somebody who can run and is smart about running. I'm not looking to throw to two. I'm looking for that relay home. First pitch is a ball to Isabella Immerling. She's 0 for 1 with a walk. Was essentially doubled off last half inning as part of the 6-4-3 double play. North Carolina transfer, there was a lot of buzz about who was going to replace Kinsey Hansen. She was pretty special for five years here behind the plate for Oklahoma. Feel a lot of excitement about what we've seen from Riley Zakay, and we haven't really seen Corey Hicks yet. She's been a little dinged up. Man, Isabella Immerling, she has looked the part. They said, send her coach. Nope, they're going to hold her up. <laughs> what a throw by Abigail Dane from center field to make sure the right choice was made. Oh, I thought coach was going to wave her home. I think Nellie thought that she was going home. Well, okay. Let's let's go back to our list of things Coach Gasso wants to see. Situational at bats. There you go. You got runners at first and third, nobody out. With the freshman and Cindy Barker. Oh, what a great piece of hitting by Emerling. She just went down and got that. Great opportunity for the freshman here who's 0 for 2. Seeing where the defense has her positioned and trying to drive in a run. Misses inside. I will say, I, I kind of like what Agbayani has been throwing. She's been missing a little inside, but she's not afraid to go in on the hands of these hitters. That's something that is really hard mm -hmm. to teach a pitcher because that is a mindset. It's a fearlessness of saying, I don't care. I'm going to go at you. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, I get a ground ball and an easy out for my team. Speaking of opportunities, here we are again, first and third. You want to see smart base running, but you also want to see smart pitch selection as well. Caught the outer edge, good pitch. One ball and one strike. Bonnie, as you had mentioned, Mindy, she had been working that inside edge, and Parker lets that one go right over the outside corner. Job staying with it by Zakay behind the plate. Two balls and a strike. Isabella Immerling at first. Only McEnroe Moranis at third. Team Sooner is up 7 0. Ground ball up the middle. Oh, Garcia with the glove. The throw to first. Not in time. Loy a little bit off the bag, but Garcia flashes the leather and drives in a run. Barker beats it out. Was that a good <laughs> by Parker on a pitch that was a little bit low to try to drive it back up the middle? I mean, 
that was. You know, pitch selection wise, it's not too far in. You're not hitting it right into your players right there. And you're going to see a couple of switches happening. There's a lot of batting gloves, elbow guards, all that going on right now in Jen Rocha. Jen Rocha is going to turn to the freshman here. But I, from the situational side of it, you know, Coach Gatso talked about situational hitting and then communication on defense and attacking locations as a pitcher. I think you saw all three kind of check there in a positive variety, right? A positive direction? Absolutely. And at the beginning of this game, we talked about what is it from last week? game to this week's game what do we want to see improvement wise and it is just looking cleaner looking sharper i think we see that here audrey lowry is a new sooner pitcher we'll give you the lowdown on the freshman when we come back it's the battle series the huddle it's where confidence is where the new Sooner pitcher, freshman Audrey Lowry hails from. Tri-West High School, small list in Indiana, was the Miss Indiana and the 2024 Indiana Gatorade Player of the Year, an NFCA All-American. We can continue. Max Preps, High School All-American, three-time Indiana All-State first team. Played with a Tennessee Mojo, was the number two player in the 2024 recruiting class, according to Extra Inning Softball, and led her clubs to four top three finishes, PGF National Championships, including a runner-up in 2022. We were impressed with her here on Wednesday night in a first pitch pop-up on the infield. Wow, it could not have been more perfectly placed, and they're still gonna get the force out at second because pinch running in that situation, Nellie McEnroe Moranis, who was pinch running for Cindy Barker, had to wait just in case the ball didn't fall. And she got caught in no man's land. That was, I don't know if you could place the ball more perfectly. And heads up play by Garcia to see that McEnroe Moranis hadn't left the bat. I mean, I think the biggest thing we've gotten from that is Garcia is impressive. Yeah. We saw that last week. We're seeing it again this week. Just her ability. They're going to say Barker left early on the attempted steal. Oh, what a tough break because it looked like, hold on, let's go. Uh, pardon me, Shady Helton. Is Coach Castle going to, are we going to get a challenge? Nope, she's going to go over and talk to the umpire. I was like, let's go, Coach Gatso, <laughs> challenging a play. Sorry, so Chaney Helton was the runner. She put that ball literally where only one player could possibly make a play. They forced out the runner who was pinch running at the time. A lot to digest here. Gets called for leaving early and gets the explanation. Let's see here. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that the one before because over at first base you can see that but yeah. coach gasso had her go and talk to the umpire after she got thrown out and asked what was it that you saw that made you want to call me out at this very oh, eight zip team sooner after a wild ending to the bottom half of the third inning there's strike one land by the way on the day one for one with a single and then was thrown out stealing. Seemingly everything that has gone right for Team Boomer ends up turning on him just a bit. Speaking of turning, turns away from that one. I don't even know how that one missed her. That, that one just barely scraped by her, but you're right. If you're Team <laughs> Bo Boomer, you're thinking to yourself, we're okay. Spitting, man. We're spitting, <laughs> we're, man. We're, we're snake bitten here tonight. <laughs> how, how do we turn this around? 2-1 misses. And I think this is something that Coach Gasso is excited to see for them, not necessarily the score or the result, but whenever you're in a situation where things aren't going your way, how do you figure it out? You can't just say, well, it's not in the cards today. How do you figure that out? Yep. Full count, three balls and two strikes. We've been trying to unpack the end of the bottom of the third inning. There was a lot of moving parts. Barker <laughs> had reached on the fielder's choice, but then had a pinch runner as the 0-1 pitch is popped up. 
into center field. Hannah Core makes the catch, and there is one away. But the replay we showed wasn't what was called leaving early. Let's go ahead and clear that up because if that was, then we would have a major issue on our hands now right now. Because <laughs> that wasn't even close. But Cheney Helton was called for leaving early right after a ball that I still don't know if it could be placed more perfectly behind the third baseman and to the shortstop. That's going to be a foul ball. Foul ball. It hit off Katie Lee before she was able to leave the batter's box but coach Gasso talked in our pregame let's let's see if I and Landry she's been this inning she has been going in tight and this is again I don't think that's this that, was that's not the right replay. that wasn't yeah. the leaving early yeah, that I, was the, a flare okay yeah that's the flare just want to make sure that's not the leaving early play that was the flare Sam Landry calls time here that because after Sydney Barker had reached, then that's when Nellie McEnroe Marinas came at a pinch run for her. She got caught in no man's land. That's fouled back. And then Cheney Hilton reached on that little looper, and the next thing you know, <laughs> we're out of the half inning. One of the foul balls that rarely gets out of the park behind the plate. And it just landed right in that lady's lap. I it, mean, it hit perfectly. off the overhang and came right down in her lap. Here's the 0-2 uh, pitch. Bounce towards short. Agbayani is over there, makes the play, and there's quickly two away. McEnroe Marinas at third. Agbayani at short. Barker at second. All right, let's. This is the replay on the leaving early call against Cheney Helm. Here we go. Let's tell me what you think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Chris. Tell me what you think. <laughs> Sorry, Cheney. We didn't mean to do you like that, but that wasn't even close, friend. <laughs> First pitch is a strike. Good job by our production crew, man. They are grinding away. And you know this is going to be a key, not just for Oklahoma, but for all the teams. That was a big point of contention this past season, not only for, okay, the runner's out, but... All right, let's check and see if the runner left early and let's get back a big hit. Oklahoma yeah. had that with the home run. Texas had that with another home run. I mean, a lot of big time situations, big time plays were reversed because yeah. runners left early. And then you started seeing it become very, oh, that, we've had two balls hit on the front end of the overhang this half inning. That's <laughs> wild. And then you saw it become very, yeah, that's where two foul balls have hit right there. For those of you on the SEC Network side, radio side, that will not do you any good. But <laughs> I, you've seen that uh, coaches that would challenge runners on second that weren't even really involved in the play. It became very petty, if you will, last year. The one, two miss, pinch misses outside, but effective. I don't mean that in a bad sense by any stretch of the imagination. You had to be paying attention wherever you were. That's going to be a good teaching moment for help. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Bounce to the right side. The Barker's pretty smooth over there. That'll do it in the top half of the fourth. A much smoother go of it so far for Sam Landry, who has been fantastic. We got to the bottom of the fourth. It's all team sooner up 8 zip. tonight at Love's Field. This is a fall ball game. And look at this crowd. Last year, over 4,000, 4,326, as you can see the average attendance. Sold out all 18 games. 24 and four last season. Home and neutral field. And there's a really good chance you're gonna see more home games this year. Look at Malloy, bang, bang. She beat it out. She just beat it out. She was at the plate when Helton was called for leaving early. That is the fourth hit of the game for Tia Malloy, who is four for four tonight with a stolen base and two runs scored. I think she looks pretty good in that leadoff spot. <laughs> I was about to say, I like this one-two right here that we have going on with Malloy and Ugbayani. Shows a bunt, takes a ball. Agbayani and beautifully placed bunt. 
I mean, look at the speed on Malloy because Call by Fallen. it was a little hard off the bat. It was, and for the pitcher to be able to get it so quickly. Wow, another beautiful bunt, another beautiful bunt. Malloy's off to third, nobody was covering, and she beat Garcia to the bag. Oh, Patty Gasso is in her bag over at third base right now. Back-to-back <laughs> -back bunts from Malloy, tagged by Ani, and then Malloy just never stopped rounding second. First I and third. love that aggression. Out. Oh, my gosh. Just watch her read and anticipate right here. She looks straight at coach whenever she's about four steps off the bag. She sees nobody is there. And it, it is wide open. McKay, as soon as she sees that the pitcher fields that ball, she needs to immediately vacate because she knows her stop is going to be over at second covering that runner that was at first. By the way, let's give credit to Gabby Garcia because she saw it and she took off <laughs> from second <laughs> base. And it was a foot race between her and Malloy. They were neck and neck. Malloy beat her to the bag, though, and... A teaching moment for Kaylee McKay, and here is a golden RBI opportunity for Ella Parker, who already on the night has reached base three times, has scored two runs, and hit a three-run homer in the first. Decent night. The 1-0 from Lowry. Good movement. Oh, swing and a miss. A ball and a strike. 8-0, team sooner. This is one of the main reasons why Ella Park. Here's the 1 1. It's in the dirt. We've seen a lot of first and thirds tonight. I'm sure Coach Gas is really happy about that because it gives this defense, it gives this offense a lot of opportunity to work on live situations. Runner goes. Zakay will just eat it and allow Agbayani to take the bag. Unofficially, that is the fourth stolen base of the night for Team Sooner. And I do say unofficial. I don't know if I've done a good job of keeping track of those or not, but I have several SBs down. Maybe I'm giving stolen bases when they're just... <laughs> you get a stolen I'm, base. And you and get, you a get a stolen like base. Oprah up here at the booth. <laughs> Chris Perlink is like Oprah. Give him all away. 2-2 pitch. Hit hard and deep to left center field. Dayton races back, makes the catch at the track, but it'll score one, and it advances Agbayani to third. An RBI sack fly. Makes it 9 nothing team sooner. And Tia Malloy has now scored three runs on the night. Good piece of hitting. It's a great piece of hitting. I mean, anytime I get to watch Ella Parker swing, it is very compact, but it happens fast. She generates a lot of power, a lot of whip through the zone in a short amount of time, and that's why you see that ball just fly off her bat. Fourth RBI on the evening for Ella Parker. Here is Nellie McEnroe Marinas. Two for three on the night for Nellie, doubled twice. And she hammers one deep to right center field. What a play by Dayton. Chasing it down in the gap. It'll score Agbayani. And it's 10-0 Sooners. Team Sooner on a line shot to right center field. And Dayton was off to the races to make that play in the gap. Two away. She has been very busy this inning. A lot of movement. But immediately, the way she tracks this ball down, that is a hard ball to get behind. But I want to go back to whenever we originally had that first and third. First pitch to Isabella Emmerling is slow. Go ahead. Being able to move the runner over, not get the throw down to second. You have second and third, having quality at bats. You're able to score those two runners. Didn't get a hit. Both of those balls were caught, but you have two more runs on the board. That is important, and that is what Oklahoma does so, so well, is take advantage of runners on the base path, especially if they get you the golden bag, second base or third base. They score the runner so well, so it's good to see that adjustment from last week. Emmerling takes it low. Lowry has fallen behind three balls and no strikes. 
Emmerling, a strikeout victim in the first, walked in her second at bat, singled last time up, and this one is trouble down the left field. Look, it's gone! It's gone! racing over the left field wall it was so fast. <laughs> we talked about her presence behind the plate and how she commands attention. Well, in this box, you can see with that swing, there's a lot of power. That was a straight-up line drive. That, just, that happened to go over the fence. That wasn't a home run. That was a line drive that had so much power. It just went over. A lot of strings from her. Emmerling, she's going to be the Sooners this upcoming season. First pitch to Sydney Barker misses low and away. Barker reached on a fielder's choice her last time up. Here's the 1 0 up and away. And what is that? Nearly incredible double play when Tia Malloy, who is back out at second base, and her teammate, by the way, threw while fading away from the bag. And she's going to hit one to Malloy. Off her glove. Tia recovers. Can't get her. Sydney Barker is aboard again. Last time she reached on a fielder's choice, they went with a, a pinch runner, and she went and played second. I bet we'll do that again here because Tia Malloy is on deck. Maybe we won't. Cheney Helton. Cheney Helton. Helton hit that blooper her last time up. And she lifts this one into shallow right field, but Tia Malloy makes up for it, gets back out on the grass and makes a catch to end the bottom half of the fourth. But three more runs from Team Sooner. We'll need some Sooner magic to come back in epic proportions for Team Boomer. They're down 11 zip as we head to the fifth in the battle series. The hunt. It's where confidence. Been all Team Sooner, 11 zip over Team Boomer, and Kirsten Deal will come in. A little bit unfair for Team Boomer tonight in their attempt to rally. They. Sam Landry, who was fantastic. And now they get to face the potential ace for the Sooners in Kirsten Deal and try to come back here tonight. Gabby Garcia, though, has one of the three Team Boomer hits. First pitch from Deal in first drive. What have you seen from Kirsten in her development over the last couple of seasons? I think I've seen speed increase, which for her works great in her favor because she has that curveball, the tendency to have that ball travel back over the plate. Having a little bit extra zip is helpful, um, but also the development of her other pitches as well. So she doesn't have to rely on the curveball all the time. She has a changeup and she has that rise ball that goes up in the zone. That gives her a little bit of leeway in not be so predictable to hitters just adds more things in her favor. Obviously, she's a lefty. Obviously, she's gotten more and more experience, a two-time national champion. There has to be some confidence behind that. So I think the biggest thing is seeing her mentally grow and mature over the past two years. One-two pitch, high two and two. She was 14-1 and one last season, 17-1 and one in her career. 42 career appearances with 25 of those coming during her sophomore season in 2024. Had four shutouts last year and six complete games. That misses low. I think the, when I think about games that really stood out for Kirsten Deal for me, watching her out at the Mary Nutter against San Diego State was a work of art. Full count pitch here. Action clock is down to five. This is as close as we've seen it. Garcia kind of bails her out there a little bit, calls time. She had struggled a bit, had deal in her first couple of appearances down in Mexico. Inning and two third, four hits, three runs against Long Beach State. There's ball four. Garcia reaches. Looked okay in an inning 
against an overmatched Utah Valley team, but still gave up three hits. She struck out 10 and walked two against Lamar. And then whenever the Sooners needed someone to go eat some innings against San Diego State, game OU 1-7 zip, Kirsten Deal, a complete game three hitter with six strikeouts. First pitch to the backstop. Off to second goes Gabby Garcia as Abby, uh, Abigail Dayton takes ball one. Had two huge appearances on the road. Complete game two hitter against UCF. And looked really good against Houston. Houston game was actually here. Complete game two hitter in that game. Pitch strike one. She's got a chance, is basically what I'm trying to lay out. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. She's Chris got Blake. a chance. And she's got an awesome demeanor about her. Not much bothers Kirsten Deal. 1-1. One, one. Fisted. Foul. It's always good to see in a pitcher who is able to maintain their composure, whether they're doing great, whether things just keep falling or things keep happening to them, a steady Eddie, but also how she is the heartbeat of this pitching staff, the one with the most experience, because we are going to go back to that because that is so important. Having that steady Eddie mentality, that's Ooh. important. Look out, JT. <laughs> He's I, glad he was behind the net on that one. I think the beard protected him. <laughs> I think he's laughing at your comment. I'm, or the smile went away whenever he heard your he comment. Heard, well, I'm impressed with it. <laughs> Can't grow a beard. Neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Here's the one-two pitch. That's hit pretty hard to right field. Helton had a good beat on him, makes the catch. She's pretty smooth out there. Cheney Helton, freshman out of Kuwait, had the call go against her on leaving the bag early, but has made a diving catch out in right field. Good job there. Having 0 for 3 on the night. Here's Cassidy Pickering. She's also looking for her first hit. Top of the fifth team sooner. Home team here tonight leads 11 0. I'm sure we'll get this question. First her, her second strike. Her last at she had that oh, hard. That's right, that's right. I'm sorry. She's one for two. I thought. Keep me honest here. One for two on the night. Had that single to left field. But we will play a full seven. So there's no run rule in effect here. There's another hard hit ball. Deep to left field. And it's gone. Cassidy Pickering. First one the opposite way. starts. Thank you. If I were in this situation, I'd be really careful running back to the dugout. It gets kind of dark in this light show. <laughs> but Cassidy Pickering, this ball is elevated, and we talked about Kirsten Deal, her curveball coming back over the plate. This was meant to be a pitch that landed on that outside corner. It didn't Pickering, you see that extension. We see some power tonight. 11 to 2. Sanders had a big swing, strike one. Sid is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. There's the dugout celebration. <laughs> Sam Landry. Smiles all around from Pickering. <laughs> <laughs> Here is the 0 1 pitch. Up high. I've been informed that the beard does not of JT Gasso does not have the support <laughs> that it has in the broadcast booth. Whoa, whoa, apparently. whoa, Chris yeah. Plank. I never said I approved. I just oh, said I didn't have a well, beard. Well, one, one half of us, I guess. <laughs> Pop fouling out of play. Oh, what a catch. This is very smooth. My co oh, oh. he dropped his phone and caught the ball. Priorities. <laughs> the most casual foul ball catch that I've ever seen. I'm, I'm sad we didn't get on camera because he, well done, my man. he literally just, eh, I'm just going to reach my arm out there. 
Here's the 0 1 swing and a miss. Got him. 0 1 0 2. Inning are uh, at bat over for Sid Sanders, her third strikeout. Here you go. Watch this. I mean, just Bone so gun. casual. Catches the ball. Soft hands. Soft hands. Oh, if you ever need a visual on what soft hands looks like, there you go. That was nice. Two way for Maya Bland. Well done, my man. A little bit up, ball one. Maya Bland on the night is one for two. Singled back in the second, but was caught stealing. First run of the game tonight for Team Boomer comes on a two-run home run from Cassidy Picker. 11 to 2. Here comes the 1-1 one, one pitch. Both of her at-bats tonight. Caught on one time, the other time it was caught, but both of them have been hard hits. She's made really good contact, really selective with her pitches too. I think that's the most impressive piece. The pitches she's swinging at, those are the ones she's ready for. She's not chasing pitchers. The 2-1 is grounded softly towards second. Barker, smooth. Did I jinx her? I don't think so. <laughs> got jammed up, and that'll do it for Team Boomer, but not before a big boom off the bat of Cassidy Pickering, and as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, still team sooner, but a little bit of momentum for the Boomers because of this. It's the battle series on the SEC Network. Let's review. We're not going to talk about traffic or weather. If anyone brings up lawn care, I will handle it. Yeah, so happy. Three home runs tonight by the Sooners. Look at these numbers over the last four seasons. 161 in 2021. 155 in 22. 117 in 2023. And 122 last year. I don't want to brag, but 2021 seems like they were doing great. <laughs> Whoever was on that team must have been pretty good. <laughs> First pitch swinging, Malloy. They finally get her out. Tia grounds out. She is now four for five on the night, and there is one away. So the Oklahoma Sooner 2021 team. That's the single season record. 161 home runs. Last year, the Miami Red Hawks entered the NCAA tournament with 159 and did hit a home run. Thank you, Tennessee. I thought for sure Miami was going to hit a few. But that 2021 team, that was... That was pretty amazing. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. Now First pitch to Ilana Agbayani is in for a strike. What a night for Agbayani. She's three for three. Missed an at bat whenever she was pitching. Takes strike two. She was due to lead off the third, but ended up pitching. Gave up a couple of runs, was the benefactor of a couple of weird things. She's got her fourth hit of the night. Good luck to the guys, the crew, producing this broadcast, figuring out who we're going to have in our postgame show because we are loaded with options. <laughs> A lot of options. That's a good problem to have, but I'll tell you what, I am really hot on Agbayani. Last year, whenever she was at BYU, this year, what I've seen from her so far, she's just dynamic. She brings that spark plug. And I, I think that is so important to have that in your lineup. You have your power hitters like Ella Parker right here up to the plate. Whenever you have a spark plug that gets on base, that only fuels hitters like Parker. One ball and no strikes. There's a hot shot to the left side. Ooh, right under the glove of Gabby Garcia. And off to third goes Agbayani. And standing up at second is Ella Parker. Will wait on the official ruling. What am I saying? There hasn't been an error. Oh, they put an error on the board for the first time tonight. <laughs> Ella Parker is at second. And yes, good point by 
our good friend Paul Rocha. I was giving all the flowers to Tennessee during that series, that Knoxville Regional that shut down Miami. Virginia shut them down too. The Virginia Cavaliers. Good work, Paul, keeping me honest up here. All right, second and third, looking to get back a couple runs they gave up last half inning. Nellie McEnroe Marinas takes ball one. I'll tell you what, though, I'm liking all this extra help you're getting. I do have a very... Over here on the broadcast. I, I do have a long list of uh, super secret textoso. I just looked at people. my phone. I have none, so I, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> There's a line shot to Maya Bland. Circles it, tagging. Oh, what a throw. We got to play at the plate. No. RBI sack fly. That ball skipped away from Zakay and Agbayani scores. It's 12 to 2. Chalk up the third RBI of the night for Nellie McEnroe Marinas. Made her fourth, sorry. She had the RBI sack fly last time up. I mean, she has seen the ball so well, but can we talk about this throw by Blant? How perfect was that? She was not even set up in a position to really run through that ball with how quickly it got there and just the angle. Parker wisely tagged up and took third as Emmerling steps to the plate and takes ball one. She homered her last time. She's two for three on the night. A walk, a single, and a homer in her last three plate appearances. A lot of good things going on on the base path. A lot of good things going on in right field tonight as well. One a little bit under and fouled it off. So just to also add a note on the home runs per season, that 2021 team, 161 home runs, 2.68 home runs per game. Not only all-time most home runs in a season by a college softball team but number one for Oklahoma in its school history 1-1 one, one. is a line drive base hit in the center field it'll score Ella Parker have a night Isabella Emmerling her third hit and that ball was smoked into center field there's the two runs they gave up. They get them back. It's 13 to 2. Chris Plank, you are reading my mind <laughs> right there. And that pitch is low and away, especially with Emmerling's swing path. That is right where she wants it to be able to just get short and sweet, get something hard, driven up the middle, into the gap, and being able to score that run. Oh, I, I stand corrected. There's a line drive, base hit in the left field by Sydney Barker. She has her second hit of the night, third time she's been on base. Here comes Cheney Help. So finishing the home run thought, 2021 all-time greatest home run season in college softball history, number one in OU history. The Sooners as a program, top five home run seasons are 2022, 2024, 2023, and 2019. You're on two of those, right? 19 and 22? All right, 19 and 21, sorry. Not bad. Not too bad. I'm, I'm just at the right age where, yes, I would love to go, but I can also say, back in my day. Fouled off by Cheney Helton. You were saying that before I interrupted you on oh, the home runs. Oh, I, I actually do have somebody in uh -oh. my corner. Um, Andrea Gasso. No sent team me a text. Beard. She said, I got you. No team beard. No team beard. I think that's why she has me is because I'm anti-beard. Very, very <laughs> controversial topic on our fall ball broadcast tonight as the 1-1 pitch misses low. We talk about the important things here. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Well, I've really been impressed with Cheney Helton. Has a hit, reached on a walk. Got Dean for leaving the bag early. A nice play in right field. Swings to a pitch up in the zone from Lowry, two and two. But I think one of the reasons there's so much excitement from Coach Gasso on this team is just the players like Helton and Barker. You see as in players that can just develop in the system and the strength program with everything Oklahoma has available to them. Katie Lee McKay looks the part. Obviously, Gabby Garcia, Riley Zakay. Tia Malloy and this young group of freshmen has been impressive. There's Gabby. 2-2. Two -two. Hey, full count. Full count with two outs. No surprise here. 
Emmerling will get a head start at first. Be careful over, or at second, be careful over at first, Barker. Oh, man, that was nasty from Lowry. There you go, kid. Pulled the string on an off speed and gets the strikeout. But two more on the board for Team Sooner. They've scored in four of the five innings, and they lead it 13 to two. As we head to the sixth inning, it's the Battle Series. Iron sharpening iron on the SEC Network. And a freshman with some filth. atmosphere tonight inside the friendly confines of Love's Field. Team Sooner has broke out the bats. They're up 13 to 2 and the first pitch is on the outer edge for a strike to Katie Lee McKay. Kirsten Deal, a little bit of a rough bottom half of the fifth, but worked her. Pardon me, top half of the fifth, but worked her way out of it as McKay fouls that one. I've got Katie Lee McKay is 0 for 2 tonight. Strikeout victim in the second, grounded out to short. Another one of those impressive looking freshmen. No two pitch. Did that thing come back fair? What a play over at first by Parker on the stretch. There's one away. Nelly McEnroe Morenas waited for it. It looked like it hit in foul territory down that line and then just shot back into fair territory. <laughs> we love some crazy spin, right? Watch this. Oh. I mean, that is right on the chalk, but <laughs> how about Ella Parker over at first? That was a great stick. We've, we've really seen her come along over at first base the way that she plays the position she looks a lot more natural a lot more fluid in her bat i mean you yeah. can't deny yeah. she needs to be somewhere might see her at first this year battle through a little bit of a of an off-season ailment back to 100 percent now a little slow roller up the middle watch this from agbayani two away rally zakay is 0 for three on the night and that one's a little bit unfair that ball looked destined for center field, and then out of nowhere, flashed Agbayani to make the play. Two quick outs here in the top of the sixth. I love her reads and her jumps on this ball. She is so quick. I mean, she set up maybe a step towards that 5-6 hole, and you can see right there, she's a step away from second base. Her range is really great. First pitch, a little bit in, ball one to Gabby Garcia. but you can feel this defense that's out on the field right now. They look like they're more comfortable playing together. Yep. They look settled in. That caught the outer edge, a ball and a strike to Garcia, who is one for two, walked and scored on the Cassidy Pickering fifth inning home run. That's Parker at first. I've really, really been impressed with Barker, who's out at second right now. Agbayani at short and Nelly McEnroe Marinas at third. Emerling behind the plate. There's Ella Parker over at first. Helton in right, Corin center, and Tia Malloy out in left field. It's a lefty lefty matchup. Here comes the 2 1 pitch from Deal. Foul down the third baseline. Hopped into the camera well. Got to make a play on that one. Come on, guys. <laughs> Good job. There's a wave. There's a wave. We get the wave, though. <laughs> See, Mara Dickman was supposed to be over there to make that play. She looked not ready. Uninterested. Not ready. Here comes the Garrett was there, too. So we can blame him. <laughs> Here comes the 2 2. Just getting a piece of it. Foul the back. Good battle there by Garcia. Both of those pitches on the outer half, sometimes with that lefty pitcher, the way that they can make that spin break at the last minute. It's a little deceptive trying to figure out what's a strike and what's not. Two two. Just missed a little up. Maybe really I'm reading too much that. into it. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. 
I like this bounce back inning from Kirsten Deal. After giving up a home run last inning, giving up a couple runs, solid here and just pounding the zone in her second full inning. And again, that is what Coach Gasso and Jen Rocho want to see from these pitchers. Pound the zone, go after the hitters. It's foul. My pregame list from Coach at. For pitchers, attack locations. We've seen Deal do that. Here comes the full count pitch. Ball four. I mean, what a battle by Garcia. We talked about how great Deal was looking, very efficient first two at bats. She gets ahead early and Garcia just battles, fouls it off, fouls it off, has a really good eye and draws that walk. The time honored impressive. tradition of me bragging on someone and then <laughs> something going south. I did that earlier with somebody. I asked you, did I? <laughs> did I you jinx curse them? them? Just jinx them? <laughs> Was that me? Did I hold the power up here in the booth? My answer is yes. <laughs> First pitch up and away. Ball one. Abby Dayton, who's looking for her first hit of the night. See if Gabby Garcia might be on the move here. A little hit and run. Score doesn't matter working on situational hitting. Oh, there are two outs. She isn't going as there's ball two. Oh. I thought you were going to get some foreshadowing here, Chris Blank. I'm going to tell you something. She took off from first base like I knew what I was talking about. Just... <laughs> she did. <laughs> Good look at the freshman. Great camera shot. Watching that. Ball out of the hands of Deal. That's it for a strike. She's over at first. Is she just, is she all in on where the ball is when she's watching Kirsten Deal after she gets the sign from Coach Gasso? What's the, what's the coaching point there? What's the teaching point for Gabby Garcia at first, Nicole? Two things, be on time. You don't want to be late, but in this day and age with video review, you can't be early either. Get on time. A good pitch, 2-2. Two -two. But also the second, Make them feel like you're going. You want the catcher, you want the shortstop, you want the dugout to feel like this runner is about to steal the bag. If you can pause them, delay them for one second, if you can get the catcher to look at you instead of framing, you've already won that pitch and you've won half the battle. Bounce to the right side, big hop. Nice job by the freshman Barker and that'll do it for Team Boomer. Strand a runner. And as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, Team Sooner have it tonight. They lead Team Boomer 13-2. It's the Battle Series on the SEC Network. Hubsfield <clears throat> Battle Series 13-2. How about the night for Tia Malloy? First pitch swinging. She's done that all night long. Grounds it to the right side. Barker getting another half inning at second. Four for six now. As Malloy grounds out with the first pitch she sees. Back to work for Audrey Lowry. And a night that has been all about Team Sooner. Give Audrey Lowry credit for battling a six run first inning. Really set the tone for the evening. Look at that ball move. Breaking ball strike one to Ana Agbayani. Speaking of good nights, Nicole Mendez. She's four for four. Stolen base and a couple of runs scored. Seems like she likes to hit here. <laughs> she likes to get on base, but Lowry right now, she, she knows this team sooner. They have been aggressive. They have been attacking early in the count. She's done a good job of placing those pitches just out of the zone or just enough to be able to handcuff them, get them to roll over. That's the key, and I love to see that from her. And I love to see that from the battery working together. 2 1 pitch. Caught the zone, two balls and two strikes. Just missed on the outer edge. Did get one update. 
Lowry rocks and fires with a full count pitch. Popped up. Did they finally figure out Agbayani? Oh, no! K could not make the play. That is You didn't jinx so her tough. just yet, Chris. That Mike. is so tough. <laughs> and for Riley, that's something that I don't think you'll see her make a mistake again. Even though they practice it, it's such a different thing in locating it. and mm. It's... For someone as the 3-2 pitch, well, it's going to be a play at first. Garcia up with it quickly. They finally got her out. Two away. Not like my playing experience could ever translate to anything, but as someone who caught, anytime there was a pop-up behind home play, it was fight or flight. It was like, oh, my gosh. Where's my third baseman? Come save me. Oh. Riley Zakay will never have a problem with that again. Now she knows. First pitch in for a strike to Ella Parker. Here's the update. We will not play the bottom of the seventh inning. So when Team Boomer comes to bat, that'll be our last half inning of tonight as we've pushed past the two-hour mark. The no one pitch to Parker is way outside. What a night for Ella Parker. Homered in her first at bat, a three-run first inning home run. Hit by a pitch, her second plate appearance in the first. Walked and scored a run in the third. Fouls this one off. Had the RBI sack fly and then last half inning singled and scored a run. That is a two for two night. Three runs scored. And by my count, five runs batted in, four runs batted in. Something about this one, two, three. I really... I personally like, but man, you know what I like more? Lowry. The freshman. And that one, two, three. All right. A scoreless half inning for Team Sooner. Only the second time tonight is 13 to 2. <sighs> How am I going to find? Final half inning for the night here at Love's Field. It's the Battle Series. Love's Field, it's the Battle Series. With Nicole Mendez, I'm Chris Plank. What a night for Team Sooner. 17 hits, 13 runs. Patty Gasso talked about feeling better from one week to the next and the improvement and seeing the overall improvement. Now, it seems a little one-sided, but I think you got to feel pretty good overall with this team with what you've seen tonight. First pitch to Pickering. A little bit low. You buying it? I do. I do buy it. And because if you can get a good core of players to buy in and see it and live out that championship mindset, you're going to get more and more and more and more. And it's only October. There is so much time. But if you can get a good core group, now I know what it looks like. Yeah. Now, now I know where I need to be. Now I know what I can strive for. So either way, this is a huge step in the right direction. Pickering on the night is the only team Boomer member with multiple hits. Two for three with the two-run home run, and she takes that one a little bit up. Twenty-one hits between the two teams. Seventeen of those twenty-one from Team Sooner. Giving her the green light, 3-0. Strike. I still... I still laugh. Cassidy Pickering's first home run. I would have swore it came on a 3-0 count. <laughs> Probably did. It was the 3-1 pitch. <laughs> it, it said it in the stats. There's ball four. And I called it as a 3-0 swing. And I'll never forget, because I'm starting to break Cassidy. She's got a great personality. It's starting to come out <laughs> after her first year. She didn't want anything to do with my tomfoolery. And I was like, 3-0? And she goes, it was 2-1. <laughs> like, was it? Are you sure? <laughs> Sid She's Sanders. had a lot of 3-0 swings, though. Yeah. Sid Sanders takes the first pitch a little bit out, ball one. 
So if you asked her today, 3-0, what would she say? She would make sure that I knew it wasn't a 3-0 count. <laughs> but she hit her first home run on. I, you know, I start thinking about you and I have been during the breaks working on what we think the lineup might look like for when this team takes the field in 2025 in February of 2025 and we expect probably over the next few weeks I meant to ask Toby Baldwin when he thinks we'll see an actual full schedule it's the first pitch to Sid Sanders is headed home this is a little bit out I start to think about potential captains right this is a team that graduated its co-captains in Kinsey Hansen and T.R.A. Jennings and I bring it up because well, I think seven is a good look at Cassidy Pickering. I think she's got a chance to be someone wearing that C for a long time. Speaking of a long time, a long way and a long bomb that nearly hops out of Love's Field. Sid Sanders has a flair for the dramatic in her last at bat in the two battle series matchups so far. And that's an absolute moonshot. Hit the light, start the party. Second two-run homer for Team Boomer. It's 13 to four. This wow. team is bumping. Big smiles from JT Gasso. He is pumped, and, and that's what you want to see. We talked about, yes, Team Sooner. They have been definitely favored this game, but the ability for Boomer to come back and continue to fight Pickering getting on base, Sid Sanders, she's had a hard time so far this game, but to make that adjustment on that low pitch, which has been getting her over and over again all game long. First pitch is a little bit up to Maya Bland. So how about that for Sid Sanders? That brings a smile to the bearded one's face. <laughs> Sanders, a strikeout in the second, the third, and the fifth, and then hits the deepest shot of the night. Second home run for Team Boomer. Makes it 13 to four. Outcome probably not in doubt. Ella Parker had the first inning home run. Isabella Immerling had the line drive home run. Land takes a strike on a pitch that looked a little in. Two balls and a strike. We talked about Bland during the break. I am a fan of how much she has come from last year. Her development, her ability to calm and slow the game down. We've seen the adjustments that she's made out on defense in the outfield. Yeah. Great catches tonight, but also just her presence in the box. We know she has speed, but whenever she's on the base path, it doesn't look like she's a deer in the headlights. It looks like she is lethal and dangerous, and you better be watching out. 3-1, foul back. Speed. Speed, speed, speed. Speed doesn't slump, and that's the best part about it. <laughs> Lefty has some power, can lay it down. There's a lot of ways that Maya Bland can contribute to this lineup. Full count pitch. She's aboard. Second time tonight for Maya Bland. She walked a uh, single back in the second, but was thrown out stealing on a massive massive throw from Isabella em Emerling behind the plate here's Kaylee Lee McKay she's looking for her first hit of the night now flirt with the action clock here time called Don't let it get lost here this evening how good Sam Landry was as well. Oh. She was outstanding. She was on fire. I really loved that peek at her pitches. I mean, we, we already knew that. Mm -hmm. She had a phenomenal year last year. I mean, she, she was up there in conversations with some of the best pitchers of the season last year. She has what it takes, and she is such a great addition to this staff. No balls and a strike. Land had a good jump. Goes back to the bag as Katie Lee McKay falls behind. No balls and two strikes. <laughs> They're 
waiting outside to get in here and no one's left early. It's a fun crowd. There's a the ball up. <laughs> Here's some screams and cheers from the dugout. It's fun. It's competitive. This is a good game. The fun. score doesn't reflect that. I mean, that first inning really. Oh, wow. Pitch. Off the second goes off. Bland. I, and again, it's it's a very cliche thing to say. You can't take six runs off the board, but you know, even if all you got in that first was the Ella Parker three run home run, still a 10 to four game, but it seems incredibly more competitive than that is yeah. the point I think you're making and I agree. Two balls and two strikes. Got her. One away. Great bounce back there from Deal. She had the home run. She had the walk. All right, fun is over. Playtime is over. Let's get, let's get the show on the road. And I, I love that. And again, you talked about her composure earlier in the game. That's what you love to see as a defense. That's what you love to see as a coach. Look at that play down the third baseline by <laughs> Nelly on a foul ball. Zakay ripped it. I mean, her, snagged it. her ability to grab that ball, shorthanded, weird wrist turn, <laughs> just so athletic. Here comes the 0-1. Hit pretty well to center field, but Hannah Core has a beat on it, makes the catch. <laughs> what a strike from Hannah Core. When you think about players that can make an impact for this team in 25, don't forget about Hannah. The unique wardrobe choice tonight. <laughs> She's almost back to 100%. Was the star of last year's fall ball season. Two way. Last hope for Team Boomer as Gabby Garcia takes it a little bit low. Well, what a great person to have up the plate right now. A runner on scoring position. Talk about quality at bats, making the most. And this is a hitter who has done that, and she has consistently had really good at bats. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. 1-1. One one. We'll take a break from the battle series for a while, but fall ball will continue. Get your tickets, get out of here and support the Sooners. Great chance to see them throughout October. That pitch is low. We'll be back with our broadcast for the final game of the battle series on November 6th. So for the Texas A&M Commerce game, which is a road game down to Commerce, Texas. October 23rd against Seminole State, and then the 26th against ULM before Mac U comes on November 1st. So that's hit foul down the left field line. The only way, to, only way to see those games is in person here at Love's Field. So you can get your tickets now at Soonersports.com slash tickets. October 23rd, October 26th is a doubleheader. And then the November 1st Gasso v. Gasso game is Jim Gasso's Mac U team. We'll take on Coach Addy Gasso's Sooners. And we'll be back November 6th with the final battle series and final game of the fall. 2-2. Two -two. Missed outside. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Chapman called it the Gasso Bowl. The Gasso Bowl, I like it. I don't know, whoever wins gets to carry the grandbabies home. I, I, well, I don't I like know that. what the trophy is. I like that. Here's the full count pitch. Deal trying to end it. Missed. Good eye by Gabby Garcia. Little scoring threat put together here in the top of the seventh inning. Two runs already in. Time is going to be called as Abby Dayton, Abigail Dayton, and Cassidy Pickering will chat with Coach Gasso. We mentioned uh, you, you can talk about outcomes all you want. Hey, it's 13 to 4. These are coaching moments. These are teaching moments, aren't they, Nicole? Coach Gasso, whenever she walks up to Dayton, knowing Pickering's on deck, she's telling her, Your job right now, you're. Basically, you're a nine-hole hitter. Get the bat, 
and pass it. Get on base, score a run, but pass the bat. Continue to pass the bat, and that's what this team has done this inning. They're almost at the start, mm -hmm. right back where they started at the beginning of this inning. And the ability to have quality at bats to narrow down the zone, that is what's really helped them. Abby Dayton's looking for her first hit of the night. She shows bunt, takes a ball low. It's going to be on Kirsten Deal to end this thing, too, for Team Boomer. At least from what we can see, no action down on that pin. And I think Coach Gasso would really like to see Deal kind of bow up and end this thing. That pitch misses a little bit in, one and one. Twenty three combined hits between the two teams tonight. Four of those from Tia Malloy. One one. That's a good spot. Ball and two strikes. Garcia at first, Bland at second. Outcome not in doubt, but not over. Not over. Especially with Cassidy Pickering waiting on deck. Here's the one two. Eight stays alive. Good hack right there. That pitch elevated on that inner half. Especially whenever Deal has been pounding that curveball, whether it's been back door or across the plate. She's been working into lefties, working away. All of a sudden, she throws one up in the zone. A ball and two strikes. The pitch. Hard hit right side under the glove of Barker into right field. Plant gets waved home. The throw is. Not in time. It's a three run at top of the seventh rally. And it's 13 to five on a ball that just, just got under the glove of Barker into right field. There's that inner half. And Dayton, she got lucky with that one. That, that should have been out three right there. But that was a great throw from right field. Online. Pickering pops this one down the left field line. Well, we talked about quality at bats. And while Team Boomer, they didn't have a ton of quality at bats. And I don't want to say too little too late because it is the seventh inning. I would rather see some adjustment than none at all. And what they have done this inning, like I said, zoning in, going after the right pitches, but also passing the bat all the way through. 13-5 is the score in favor of Team Sooner as Cassidy Pickering takes strike two on the inside edge. Second and third, two outs. Here it comes. Pop that. Emerly makes the play. Full game. How about that from Team Sooner tonight? They win it 13 to 5, pounding out 18 hits and taking care of business in the battle series. All right, when we come back, Ella Parker will join us down on the field as the Sooners. Team Sooner takes care of Team Boomer in the battle series.